Hello everybody, Gage here from Sharp. Excited to have you with me for a brand new YouTube series uh, we will be commencing today, which is called the Battle of the Blades. In this series, we are going to pick one knife shape and one size of that knife shape. We're going to pick three knives within uh, that size and shape, and we're going to compare them to one another. We're gonna start by going over the specs of the knives, the steel type, the handle materials, uh, and then we're just gonna kind of touch and feel, uh, show you the balance points, and just talk about sort of the uh, intangibles that can be a little bit hard to get across uh, through pictures and videos online. I'll just kind of hold the knives, see how they feel in my hand, and give you my personal opinion on their fit and finish and their feel. Once all of that's over with, we're gonna start chopping with them and we're gonna put them through three tests. Today we're gonna do the onion test, the carrot test, and the red bell pepper test, but we would love to hear from you guys what vegetable tests you think we should put these knives through to give you guys a better idea of what the best knife is. So without further ado, today's video, we are going to be comparing 240 millimeter gyutos, specifically the Hatsukokoro Shinkido, the Yoshikane Nashiji, and the Masamoto KS. Some really sweet knives to test out today, so without further ado, let's get into it. Cool, the first knife I'll talk to you guys about is the Hatsukokoro 240mm Gyuto from their Shinkido line. This guy is made from Algami Super with an iron cladding and has a uh, Kuroruchi and Damascus finish on it. This knife is probably one of the uh, bougier looking knives of the three that we're going to talk about today. It's also got this very, very nice chunky ebony handle with white buffalo horn ferrule on it. This handle is octagonal in shape, so it's suitable for both righties and lefties. This knife was produced for the Hatsukokoro brand by Takahiro Nihei, who is a very highly regarded uh, knife maker. Uh, and this knife is, like I said, stunning to look at. It's a little bit heavier in the hand. Its balance point is about an inch from the uh, tang and handle insertion point, which puts it right at where you would grip it for a pinch grip. Uh, makes the knife feel very, very nicely balanced. This knife has a pretty chunky handle on it, which is uh, really uh, neither here nor there, nor there. It really just depends on your personal preference. I personally love the way it fills up my hand. I think it feels really great. Um, the fit and finish on this knife is really, really nice. Uh, there are a couple things that I might change. Uh, the spine isn't particularly sharp, but it could be sanded down a little bit better. And the choil, same sort of story there. It's not particularly sharp, uh, but if uh, maybe if I picked one of these guys up, one of my my first projects might be to just uh, sand down the, the spine and the choil. This guy is quite thick right out of the spine or right out of the tang here. So even though it's not quite as sanded down as you might like, uh, it really doesn't feel like it's digging into the uh, pad on your index finger there. It, it, it provides sort of a nice platform for your finger there. Like I said, the handle's pretty chunky, so it fills up the rest of your fingers. The space between uh, choil and, uh, and uh, handle isn't uh, the, the, the biggest. I kind of have smaller hands, so I can fit my about three quarters of my uh, middle finger in there. Uh, but like I said, it feels really, really comfortable in the hand. Uh, no, no real issues with the uh, with the hand feel on this guy. I'm really excited to test this guy out. Um, again, really, really beautiful finish on it. The Damascus is just beautiful. When we take a look at the bevels, no real issues here. You might notice a couple sort of like minor little hammer marks. So there might be a couple little low spots in the bevels here. Uh, but the edge geometry is really, really nice um, and nothing, uh, nothing too serious in terms of the uh, the the uh, beveling on this guy. So uh, yeah, really really cool knife here, Hatsukokoro Shinkido 240 millimeter Gyuto. Next up, the Yoshikane Nashiji 240 millimeter Gyuto with stainless cladding. Uh, Shirogami number two at the core. So this guy is the only knife with uh, stainless cladding on it that we're looking at today. The other two uh, are either iron clad or are mono steel, carbon steel. So this guy will be the easiest to maintain of the three. Uh, it's definitely got a, a different uh, feel to it than the Shinkiro, much lighter in the hand. Uh, the handle is quite a bit more slender. Uh, it's got a walnut with maple uh, ferrule handle on it. Um, this guy is a little more in line with what I would normally go after. Uh, really, really thin at the spine, really thin behind the edge. So uh, I'd imagine this guy is going to go through the carrots really, really easily. 
Um, the fit and finish on this guy's uh, a little bit better in my opinion than the Shinkiro in terms of the uh, uh, spine and choil. They've been really nicely sanded down, especially on a knife that's a little thin like this. Uh, I find it especially important that uh, this is sanded down nicely because um, it, it, with really thin knives, if they're sharp, they really dig into the uh, padding on your index finger. So I'm not getting any of that with this guy. The uh, distance between uh, choil and handle is really nice. I can fit my whole middle finger in there. Uh, feels really comfortable in the hand. Definitely a much different feel than the Shinkiro being uh, quite a bit heavier and, and quite a bit uh, chunkier. This guy feels much more slender and, and light. Um, we'll see how that translates into its use later. The balance point on this guy is quite far forward. So the Shinkiro was probably about an inch off of the handle and tang insertion point. This guy is about two inches off, so it's quite forward. I would say um, about an inch forward of your of a standard pinch grip. Um, but in my opinion and in my uh, personal taste, I really like uh, knives that are, are balanced further forward. I, I suspect even a knife balanced like here would feel really good to me because uh, I use more of like an up and down push or pull chopping motion. And I find the knives that are balanced further forward uh, really lend themselves well to that uh, style of chopping. Yeah, uh, a grind on this guy is really nice as well. Like I said, super, super thin, almost got like a bit of like an S grind thing happening here um, hollow ground looking at the uh, the bevels I'm not seeing any like glaring issues again you might see a, a few tiny little low spots I noticed uh, on this particular blade couple little low spots uh, up near the shinogi line here but uh, nothing crazy um, I'm sure you'd still be able to get a really nice polish on this guy with uh, without too too much effort it is hollow ground so you will have to work out the uh, the hollow uh, edge geometry on it if you do want it uh, to polish the bevels on it uh, but I don't think that would be necessary on this guy. Um, I've used the Yoshikane's a little bit, so I already kind of know how this guy's gonna perform, uh, and they are crazy, crazy sharp, really nice performing knives. So excited to uh, test this guy and put it up against the other two. Finally, we have the Masamoto KS Gyuto 240 millimeters, of course. This guy is made from Shiragami number no. two as well, but it, ha it is a mono steel, so it's got no cladding on it, whether that's iron or stainless. Uh, what this means, uh, at least in our experience, is that the patina that forms on this knife is gonna be really, really cool. It's gonna form uh, pretty consistently because there's no like difference between the iron and the, and the core steel on this guy. If you are looking for a way to put a really nice patina on your knife, go out and buy yourself a six pack sausages uh, the, the more fat the better roast those guys up and slice away and you'll find that the uh, the sausages really do a great job of uh, putting a really beautiful patina on your knife you'll get really nice blue light gray even dark gray hues on your knife and again this guy will patina really evenly the Masamoto KS is probably uh, known to a lot of you guys um, if you are uh, uh, knife nerds already the Masamoto KS is pretty famous um, and I'm excited to test this guy out we haven't had them in the shop uh, for a while now. I think it's been over two years since we've had these. Um, so really excited to test this guy out. Fit and finish on this knife is really nice. Uh, balance point is a little bit closer to the handle than the Yoshikane, but not quite as close as the Shinkiro. So um, balanced, uh, balance wise, the uh, Yoshikane is furthest forward, the Shinkiro is furthest back, and the Masamoto is somewhere in between. Um, basically right uh, where your, your pinch grip would be, maybe like a half an inch back of that. Um, this guy's probably got the most expansive space between uh, choil and and uh, and handle. I know some people really like that. I know some people really don't. But again, it's all your personal preference. I think it feels really nice in the hand. It's got a, a slightly chunkier handle on it than the Yoshikane, but not quite as chunky as the Shinkiro. And the handle is uh, D-shaped. So this guy is the only one that's uh, only suitable for righties. Though I have had a lot of lefties come into the shop and feel these D handles and not be uh, to put off by them. So something to keep in mind if you are a lefty. Uh, buffalo horn ferrule, magnolia uh, wood for the uh, for the bulk of the handle here. Uh, in terms of the uh, the feel in the hand, feels really good, really uh, light and nimble. Probably the lightest of of all the three knives that we're testing out, but not not far off from the. Uh, and actually, now that I hold them, maybe we'll have to get an actual measurement 
because they feel very similar. But anyways, uh, spine is very nicely sanded down on this guy. Choil is nicely sanded down. It's it's quite thin though, so uh, you might want to even sand it down a little bit more. Uh, again, maybe like the first project that you undertake on, on one of these knives, but right out of the box feels really, really nice as well. One more point before moving on, we'll touch on the style of grind on all three of these knives. So the Yoshikane and the Shinkiro have uh, hollow grind on them, meaning they kind of are shaped like this. And the Masamoto KS is convex, so it's kind of shaped like this. Like so. We'll see how that translates into use. I suspect that the uh, the convex grind on the Masamoto will probably provide the best food release, uh, but we'll uh, we'll see what happens here. Quick disclaimer, uh, we have touched all of these guys up on a stone before we uh, started chopping with them. So the out of the box edge on all three was really, really nice, uh, but we figured to give the knives a fair test on their performance. Uh, we would do the same sort of uh, just quick touch up on a stone and a strop, uh, and that way we'd get the most, uh, the most accurate test results. Uh, so yeah, just keep that in mind. Okay, before I do any chopping here, I just want to sort of give my initial sort of thoughts on the knives and what I think is going to be my favorite. And um, for mostly aesthetic reasons, but also uh, feel in the hand, I feel like the Shinkiro is going to be my favorite. I'm a huge fan of Algami Super Steel. Um, I love the Kuruuchi finish. I love the the contrast between the Kuruuchi and the Damascus uh, finish on the on the beveling here. The handle is super super cool. Uh, I don't own a knife like this right now, so that might be weighing on my decision a, a little bit as well. Uh, but I feel like it's going to be interesting to see how my attitude changes as we test these knives out. When Jake was doing the roundup videos, he went in with an initial sort of thought of what his favorite knife was and he was really surprised to find that through uh, testing all of them out uh, that his opinion changed so we'll see how that affects uh, me as well. So the first test I'm going to do is the onion dice. Here we go! So all three of these knives are spectacular. I don't think I'm gonna have a real issue with any of them, but uh, at, you know, initial opinions, that was spectacular. That was very enjoyable. Um, generally, I find up the mountain, no problem, even with a slightly dull knife. Down the mountain, things can get a little sketchy if your knife isn't super sharp and you don't have nice geometry on it. And it can be especially hard to get nice, nice uh, radial cuts right uh, to the very end of the onion here. This guy uh, gave me no issues whatsoever. I was able to uh, put the knife exactly where I wanted it to go and it just went right where I told it to. So th that was very nice. Um, yeah, the, that, that horizontal cut felt fantastic as well. The geometry on this guy is really nice. Um, something that I've been kind of learning as I've been testing more and more knives is, um, you know, thin at the spine isn't always the best. Uh, sometimes what happens with a really thin knife when you're doing your onions uh, is they tend to sort of get stuck together and then you'll have like pieces kind of like shoot off at you, which obviously is not what you want. Uh, with these thicker knives at the spine, I find like the, the ingredient is separated a little bit, not too much, but just enough to allow your knife to come out of the ingredient without the uh, the onions kind of like flailing off like that. So um, yeah, quick point there that felt really nice. Woo! <laughs> yeah, uh, it never gets old, guys. Uh, I've been doing this five years now, and cutting with a freshly sharpened, brand new knife is still as exciting as it was the first day we started the shop. Um, and this guy is not disappointing me so far. It feels fantastic. Um, I really like the weight forward in the in uh, in the blade. Um, I like that it's a little heavier overall. I don't even really have to put any pressure down as I'm chopping. I'm just kind of using the natural curve of the knife and, and chopping through and it went through no problem. So that felt fantastic. Next up, we'll do our julienne onion test. Here we go. That was spectacular as well. I'm really digging this knife. I uh, generally go for like much lighter, much thinner knives, but I'm really, really enjoying the sort of uh, uh, heavier, heavier feel to this guy. It's really making the, uh, the the up and down chopping really, really easy. 
Look how thin those are, that's crazy. Oh, I always screw up that part. Anyways, don't say anything. Don't make fun of me. Uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, uh, this guy is spectacular. I'm gonna reserve judgment, of course, though, because we've got some more knives to test out. Uh, but uh, initial thoughts on this guy, spectacular. Very, very happy. Dice test, Yoshikane 240, here we go. Uh, man, yeah, uh, it's hard to believe just how well all these knives are performing. Uh, and it's hard to say that this one performed any better than the, than the Shinkiro, but that was spectacular as well. Man. Edge geometry, full display on this guy. Like that, that, uh, that horizontal cut there. Sometimes, if your knife's a little thicker, not that that really happened on that one. I'll, I'll be honest, but um, sometimes what can happen when you're doing those horizontal cuts is um, it'll sort of like wedge the the onion apart a little bit. And I didn't have any of that happening there. That felt really, really nice. Whew. <laughs> It's gonna be hard to say one is better than the uh, than any of the other ones because they're all like I mean we haven't done the Masamoto yet but uh, so far dice test is pretty dead even I would say different feel of course like like much heavier on this guy so you do have to be a little bit more I would say deliberate maybe is the word I would use with with the uh, with the lighter knives you really have to like put them where you want them to go whereas the heavier knives tend to sort of um, you know, do a little bit more of the work for you. <laughs> yeah, oh uh, man. Uh, I feel like we're just gonna have a dead tie between these three knives today. Uh, the really, really spectacular feel on that guy as well. Again, definitely a different feel, like lighter. Um, um, I, d I did feel like this guy went through maybe just a touch easier because it's a little thinner, um, but not much at all. It may also just be that, again, like I tend to sort of uh, gravitate more towards the light thin knives. So I have more of them at home and therefore might be a little bit more uh, comfortable with this guy. So yeah, um, these are always fun to do as well. And look at that, no problem whatsoever. Don't make fun of me, guys. Completely missed that cut. That's okay. Felt nice. We'll cut this part out. Shh. Hopefully I don't cut myself. Shouldn't have said it, now it's gonna happen. Onion test, Masamoto KS240 Guto. They all go through the spine very, very, e or through the spine. They all go through the uh, root of the tomato very, very easily, but I was most blown away by the Yoshikane going through the root, if I'm being completely honest. The Masamoto and the Yoshikane feel sort of similar. Um, the Masamoto's got a slightly chunkier handle on it, so um, again, kind of just your personal preference. Um, I. Uh, Again, generally go for like the more slender stuff, uh, but I'm really, really digging the feel of the of the Shinkiro. I'm 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 digging the feel of all of them, but uh, um, I don't know. Like I said, I don't really have anything like the Shinkiro right now, so um, th that guy's feeling a little a little different and kind of cool, um, new and exciting. Um, but the Yoshikane is uh, is a super high performing knife so far as well. So we'll see how the uh, Masa, Masamoto holds up. I would suspect if all of the reviews on the, in the forums online are, are to be uh, believed, the Masamoto is gonna have no problem uh, standing up to the performance of these other guys as well, but let's see. So uh, Masamoto KS Guto onion dicing test. Whew. 
Yeah, very uh, very similar to the Yoshikane. Um, really thin, very, very um, uh, thin at the tip. Um, I feel like I can be very, very precise with this guy. Um, really, really nice feel going through going through the uh, the radial cuts with this guy. Um, horizontal cut felt very similar to the Yoshikane as well. Really, really nice. Quite a bit lighter than the than the Shinkiro as well. Uh, feels more sort of in line with the with the Yoshikane there. Really, really nice. Okay, next we've got. Uh, next up, Onion Julien test. Yoshikane. Here we go. Nope. Masamoto. Masamoto KS 240 Onion Julien test. Here we go. Oh, yeah, that felt really nice. Uh, balance on this guy feels awesome, super sharp. Um, man, I, uh, I feel like I'm saying the same things for all three of these knives, but they're all true things that I'm saying. They all feel fantastic. Um, initial thoughts, I really can't give the edge uh, uh, to one or the other or the other. Um, it really tight race through uh, through the onion test here. Um, so we'll have to see how they perform on the uh, bell pepper and the carrot to really make a decision here. Next test is the bell pepper. I think this is a good test because uh, the skin on a bell pepper can be a little tricky to get through, especially as your knife dulls a little bit. Um, if you don't have a good a sharp edge on your knife and if you don't have good edge geometry, the bell pepper can be one of those frustrating things to cut. You'll find the knife kind of skips over the skin a little bit. I also feel like uh, when, when we kind of do our fillet open on this guy, it's gonna tell us um, a lot about how the knife feels, um, sort, sort of just like with its, uh, you know, like, how nimble it is, how how easy it is to control. So that's why we're doing the bell pepper test. But again, if you have any ideas, let us know down below. We'll start off with the Shinkiro 240 bell pepper test. Here we go. Man. I don't know if you guys can tell from the video, but like, again, I am like just it feels like a freaking scalpel. I'm like just touching the bell pepper and it's just like falling apart for me. Feels fantastic. Um, again, tip, full display there, right through, no problem. The skin, if you ever find, normally when I cut a bell pepper, I go this way because I find it easier to get through the skin uh, if you're going from uh, pith down. Uh, but these guys are crazy sharp and we'll see, uh, see just how well they perform doing it the hard way here. And we'll go like no pressure at first. And yeah, like, look at that. I'm applying zero pressure here. And again, I find this Shinkiro with the with the weight of it really makes uh, really makes it easy to allow the knife to sort of do the work for you. All I'm really thinking about here is pushing the knife away from myself, and it's just pulling itself right through. So that feels fantastic. Yeah, unreal. This thing is crazy. Um, I'm, re I'm really digging the feel of this guy. I'm kind of thinking that I've been, uh, you know, missing this all of my life. Something, uh, something on the little heavier end here. We haven't done any rock chopping with this guy. Maybe we'll do a little rocking with it. Feels, feels great as well. Um, though it is quite flat because of how long the blade is, and it does have a little bit of a pitch up at the, uh, at the tip here. You can get real high up if you're rocking with this guy, and it is so sharp, it's like digging right into my cutting board, which is kind of cool, I love that feeling. And honestly, I, pro I wouldn't feel comfortable getting up much higher than that anyway, so that's, uh, yeah, really nice. Let's just do a little quick. Hmm, yeah. Very nice. Okay, again, uh, 
Really hard to say anything negative about this knife. I really don't have anything negative to say. It feels fantastic. I'm really digging this sort of slightly uh, heavier feel and chunkier, chunkier feel to this guy. It performed really, really well uh, with those bell peppers. Um, uh, you know, doing our little our little fillet open felt fantastic. Like I said, I just felt like I was kind of touching it where I needed to, and it was going right through. So um, yeah, re really, uh, really nice uh, on the bell pepper test. The Shinkiro. Yoshikane 240 millimeter Gyuto bell pepper test. Here we go. <laughs> yeah. Again, I don't know how I'm gonna give how I'm gonna choose a winner here. They're all like really on the same level. I think it's really just gonna come down to sort of my personal preference and just kind of what I'm looking for in, in a next knife if I'm deciding between these three. Um, definitely a different feel to this guy, but super sharp as well. I felt, again, like all I'm really having to do is, is uh, put it where I want it to go and it's doing the rest for me. So again, skin test, no pressure. Easy peasy. It's not skipping on the skin whatsoever. It's going through very nice and easy. You do a little pull cut instead of the push. That almost feels even better. Man. Yeah, real nice. Okay, let's see if we can go a little, a little faster here. See what that does. Yeah, spectacular. Rocking is very comfortable with this knife as well. Very nice. Man, I can't think of anything negative I would say about this guy. In fact, I would say, uh, you probably noticed when I was going through the Shinkiro, it had a little tiny hang up on the, uh, on the sort of uh, the little stem here. The Yoshikane went through no problem whatsoever. Um, I may have been a little apprehensive with the Shinkiro at first, so that might be uh, more to do with, you know, how I was going through the pepper, because uh, that guy performed just as well. Uh, but maybe because it's a little thicker, it had a little tougher time going through the, through the uh, stem there. In any case, uh, they, they both feel fantastic uh, through the bell pepper test as well. Masamoto KS Guto 240 bell pepper test. Here we go. Yep. Insert what I said about every other knife into this knife as well. Uh, super sharp, goes right where I tell it to, no problems whatsoever. Um, went through the stem uh, about the same as the as the, or I should say, pretty much exactly the same as the as the Yoshikane did. So maybe the 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 slightly thicker blade on the Shinkiro is making it a little more difficult to go through the the stem, but really not much at all. No pressure whatsoever. No problem whatsoever. Yeah, this is a blast, man. Very, very nice. Uh, we'll do a little rocking with this guy as well, see how that does us. Yeah, man. Um, I wish I could. Uh, I wish I could say something about one of these knives that makes it better or worse than any of the others. But uh, honestly, they're all uh, in their own right performing at an exceptionally high level. I've said this before throughout the video, but I feel like it's really just gonna be kind of your personal preference. So I hope we're doing a good job of sort of uh, uh, getting across how they how they kind of feel in the hand because that's the most difficult thing to get across uh, through, through pictures or videos. Um, so again, um, I'm still kind of leaning Shinkiro after those first two tests here. I'm really digging the sort of, I, again, I keep saying this, but I kind of want something with a little bit more weight to it this time to complement some of the other knives that I have already. Uh, so going into the final uh, carrot test, uh, I'm gonna say I'm still leaning uh, towards that Shinkiro there. Would you care for a uh, nub? I would. That's good nub. <laughs> carrot test. 
Shinkiro Hatsukokoro 240mm Gyuto. This one's for all the marbles here, guys. I find uh, I'm, I'm uh, interested to see how this guy goes through the carrots. I find the thicker knives generally don't perform quite as well with the uh, more dense root vegetables, um, but we'll see what happens here. So um, I think my initial cut is just gonna be a couple like little rounds here maybe, just to see how that, f yeah. And we already knew this, but the tip on this guy is really, really nice and nimble. That felt fantastic. And we'll do some rounds just in the mid sort of, yeah, look at that. Pretty decent food release on this guy as well. Nothing sticking too crazily to it. Fantastic. Okay, now we'll go right through the, uh, right through the middle. That was very nice. Jake's got his eyebrows up. If they weren't attached to his face, they'd probably be flying away right now. That felt very nice. Oh, boy. That's some good release. That's very nice release. Yeah. Oh, a little sticky stick there, but uh, nothing crazy. Oh, come back here, Garrett. Um, I'm surprised. I honestly thought that this guy would, uh, would kind of fall behind. I mean, we haven't tested the other two yet, so we don't know, but, uh, I feel like that's going to be hard to beat. Again, it's a little sticky, little sticky stick there, but nothing crazy. It's coming off pretty well. Like I I've worked with knives where like, you, you could like you get a pair of freaking pliers out to get the carrot off, right? And this this guy, you know, they're sticking a little bit, but uh, but they're coming off pretty pretty easily, right? Nothing too crazy there. So yeah, Shin Shinkiro uh, 240 uh, on the carrot, very very nice. We'll see. Uh, I, I I'm definitely uh, interested to see how these other two perform on the carrot because uh, I feel like they might be a little bit better, but uh, yeah, it's hard to say. I guess we didn't do. Uh, I said I was gonna do, well, I didn't tell you guys anything, but Jake and I discussed <laughs> that we were gonna do a little uh, brunoise here too, so maybe I'll do that. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Can the Shinkiro brunoise? Yes, it can. Well, I guess we're not even, we're, we're only halfway through here. Mm. Yeah, very nice. What can I say? I've got good taste. <laughs> In knives at least. She doesn't watch any of my videos. Yoshikane 240mm Nashiji Gyuto. Carrot test, here we go. Um, so, so we'll do the same thing as we did with the Shinkiro. I'll do a couple, uh, do a couple uh, tip tip tests. Fantastic. Mid blade, sort of towards the heel. Real nice. Oh, we got carrots flying everywhere. How's the food release look to you, Jake? It's pretty good, right? Nothing, nothing sticking like crazy. I uh, kind of ruined a bunch of my rounds there, but. It's not important. Okay, now uh, I feel like this is the most telling test is going uh, going right through the middle of the carrot here. Oh. The Shinkiro was very nice, but it's hard to argue that this guy's not better at that cut. That was pretty spectacular. Um, I know it sounded like there was a little bit of like ripping happening there. Um, and there may have been, but honestly, like very nice clean cut. I don't see any, any signs of rippage there uh, and it felt just fantastic. Do a little bit of rocking with this bad boy. We're getting a little little sticky stick here now, but it's coming off pretty easy. I would personally like never cut a carrot like that anyways though with the rocking motion. Push cut, very nice. Pull cut. I am finding like with the, with the lighter knives, you do have to be like a little more deliberate. Like you don't have as much of the weight of the knife to help you get 
all the all the way through the ingredients. So I'm finding that this guy got a little bit hung up and you probably notice it, but if I really just kind of go for it, I don't notice it at all. But when I was going a little slower and kind of being a little more apprehensive, I was getting a little hung up there, but once you get comfortable with the knife, I feel like you don't, you don't really cut like that. You cut, you know, you cut with a little more, a little more confidence and it's, and it's just fine. Okay. And we did, we got to do a little Brunois test here. So take another little nib off of this guy. Whew. Oh no. Break my heart. I feel like that's a good, uh, a good test for knives too. Like the carrot being sort of round, you're not cutting through like a super stable surface, if that makes any sense. Like that curvature, you really, your knife really has to be sharp uh, to, to really, to take those cheeks of the carrot off. And that felt fantastic. Making the planks there felt really, really nice as well. Batonified, no problem. Man, look at that. Yeah, I don't know, I was, uh, I was coming into this test thinking the Shinkiro might uh, hold up to these uh, to these other two, but I've got to say I think the the Yoshikane takes the carrot test over the uh, over the Shinkiro, um, and we'll see how it holds up against the the Masamoto. But um, yeah, um, I don't know. Just being, I think, slightly lighter or slightly thinner, I feel like it was just moving through things just a little bit easier. I don't know. It's not a huge difference. I'll, I'll be honest. Like the the Shinkiro like performs exceptionally well at the carrot, but uh, this guy just has a certain something going through that carrot. Felt really really nice. So. Should we do a carrot to carrot test, right? <laughs> Masamoto KS240 Guto carrot test. Here we go. Cool. So uh, yeah, like on the on the last two, we'll do a little we'll do a little tip action here. Woo. Initial thoughts there, the food release looks really nice on this thing. Um, like we pointed out, con this is the only one with a convex grind. The other two have hollow, hollow ground. Uh, um, grinds. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so yeah, kind of, kind of showing us um, slightly better food release here. And yeah, and definitely, That's nice. yeah, look at that. Hard to argue that uh, the food release on this guy is not better than on the other two. That's pretty cool. Straight down. Oh, our carrot just exploded in half there. That was interesting. Not by any fault of the knife, I don't think. Let's do another split test, because I don't think that was fair. Yeah. I'm fine, and I've used this knife before. I feel like uh, I'm just not getting up on the tip. I think it's got a little bit more of a curve up towards the tip on it than the other two do. So I think that's why I wasn't able to get right through there super easily. I mean, I was able to get there very easy, super easily, but not as super duper easily as on those guys. But yeah, I think it's just me. I'm the problem, not the knife. <laughs> I do, it's funny, I definitely find the the push cut with this guy isn't quite as nice when compared to the pull cut with the Masamoto. 
The food release is definitely nicer than, than the other knives on the carrot. Yeah, like it's 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 per, it's like there's no friction whatsoever when I'm taking the when I'm when I'm pushing the 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 carrot off. Ooh, that was nice. What the heck is that? <laughs> Take that part out. Fix it in post. Yeah, I feel, oh man, I don't know what to say. I feel like, I feel like the, uh, the Yoshikane was a little nicer for the, for, for the, uh, Brunois. Not a tremendous difference. But I would say, yeah, I would say like the, the Yoshikane was a little bit better for the, for the Brunois carrot, but, uh, uh, or sorry, yeah, the Yoshikane was a little bit better for the Brunois carrot, but the uh, food release is definitely, uh, for the carrot at least, the best on the Masamoto. So I think we gotta give, uh, I think we gotta give the carrot test to the Masamoto, which, if we tally up all of our all of our scores here, I know we haven't really been keeping score too, too much, but I think we gave, we gave a tie to all three on the onion. We gave the bell pepper test to the, to the Yoshikane. And now we're giving sort of like a tie between the Yoshikane and the Masamoto to the carrot test. But my, my heart is just still going towards the Shinkiro for some reason. I don't know, like I said, may maybe because, maybe if you're looking for your first 240 and you want something that's like just gonna perform all around super, super well, the Shinkiro is still a great option, but maybe go with the, with the Yoshikane. Um, if you are looking for something, maybe you already have a bunch of really light knives and you, and you want something with a little bit more heft to it, Shinkiro, like that's where I'm at right now. Shinkiro is just speaking to me for some reason. Um, maybe for a couple of reasons that aren't super important, which are the aesthetic, like it looks beautiful. Uh, maybe we'll get a shot of the patina that's forming on this guy after as well. It looks so cool. Um, it almost looks like there's like another layer of Damascus forming at the core steel here. But yeah, um, again, and, and knife, knife buying is such of like a, a tangible experience. Like you really have to, like it's really nice to be able to handle things. Obviously it can be a little tough to buy knives online, um, but hopefully this is kind of giving you some insight as to sort of my thought process choosing between these three knives. And like I said, um, I think I'm going, I think I'm going Shinkiro, even though we gave the most points to the, uh, to the Yoshikane which is also a beautiful knife that I think you'd be very happy with as well. So there you have it, guys. There's the Battle of the Blades, our anecdotal, not so scientific testing method for these three knives. Um, I ended up picking the uh, Shinkiro as the one I would take home, but I would be absolutely ecstatic with, with any of these three knives. I hope you enjoyed watching the video. If you did, leave a like, subscribe to our channel for more knife-related content. Make sure to let us know down below what you wanna see uh, in the next episode of the Battle of the Blades, the shape and the three specific knives you want us to compare. And until the next video, stay sharp.